Welcome. In the last lesson, we learned that the four quantum numbers together represent the address of an electron inside any atom. Today, we will dive into what those specific numbers mean and what they tell us about where the electron is most likely to be. This slide shows a flowchart of the four quantum numbers. Notice that as we increase the principal quantum number n on the top, we increase the total number of floor plans or apartment shapes represented by quantum number L, angular momentum, in red. Likewise, as angular momentum increases, we unlock additional orientations that the apartment can have, represented by the m sub L magnetic quantum number in green. However, each apartment can only fit two electrons, one which is spin up and one which is spin down. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the angular momentum quantum numbers in red. Starting with L equals zero, every energy level has an S orbital. Think of S for simple sphere. As you'll see for all the orbitals, we include the energy level in the name of the orbital. So the first energy level has a 1s orbital, the second energy level has a 2s orbital, and so on. Starting in the second energy level, L can equal 1. When L equals 1, we have a p orbital. Think p for power lifting. These orbitals look like dumbbells. There are three orientations of p orbital, each corresponding to a different magnetic quantum number m sub L in green. The p orbitals in the second energy level are named 2p orbitals. The p orbitals in the third energy level are named 3p orbitals, and so on. Starting in the third energy level, L can equal 2. When L equals 2, we have a d orbital. Think of d for redonk, because these are when the orbitals start to look really kind of strange. There are five different orientations of d orbital corresponding to magnetic quantum numbers from negative 2 to positive 2. The d orbitals of the third energy level are named the 3d orbitals. Last lesson, I displayed the energy levels as stories on a building and the orbitals as apartments within the building. From now on, we'll represent orbital energies on an energy level diagram, like the one shown to the right. The rows represent the energy levels. The clusters of boxes represent the subshell, such as an S, P, or D, and each box within a cluster represents a single orbital. Let's dissect the first three S orbitals. The top picture here shows a quarter slice of the spherical 1S orbital. The bottom graph shows the probability of finding an electron at a certain distance from the nucleus in the 1S orbital. The tallest point on the graph is the most likely location of an electron within a 1s orbital. We can also see from the graph that there is zero probability of finding an electron at the nucleus, which is represented by point r equals zero on the bottom axis. The 2s orbital is larger than the 1s orbital, even though they both fit the same number of electrons, which is 2. Looking at the radio probability function at the bottom, we see that the most likely location of an electron in a 2s orbital is further from the nucleus than in the 1s orbital. We can also see a point where there is zero probability of finding an electron. This point is called a node. As n increases, the number of nodes increase. Moving on to the 3s orbital, we see that it's even bigger than the 1s and the 2s orbitals, and that the most likely location of an electron is even further from the nucleus. The 3s orbital has two nodes. In fact, as we increase the value of n, we see an increase in the number of nodes for all orbitals, not just the s orbitals. The 4s orbital will have three nodes. The 4p orbital will have three nodes as well. This slide shows the electron density of a 2p orbital. Notice that there is a symmetric amount of density above and below the nucleus. The 2p orbital has a region of no electron density called a nodal plane that passes right through the nucleus and separates the two lobes of the p orbital. Now, 
you may be wondering, how does an electron travel from one lobe of the p orbital to the other if it's not allowed to exist in the node? Well, that question assumes that electrons are behaving like particles, which travel in straight line trajectories. Instead, remember that the electron is not a particle. It's a stationary wave. And the shape of the wave is the shape of the orbital. So that wave is 0 at the nodes, but is a positive number on each side of the node. So the electron does not really travel from one side of the node to the other. Instead, it simultaneously exists on both sides of the node. If one instance, we detect an electron in the top lobe, and then the next instance detect the same electron in the bottom node, we would say that the electron tunneled or teleported between the two lobes. It did not physically move like you would think of for a particle. There are a total of three 2p orbitals corresponding to m sub l negative 1, 0, and positive 1. They're oriented at 90 degree angles to each other. As we move up to the d orbitals, things start to get more complicated. The d orbitals look like x's, except one that looks like a ring around a dumbbell. There are five d orbitals in each energy level, starting at n equals 3. The five d orbitals each have two nodal planes. You won't need to know much about any orbitals beyond d, but just for fun, here's a 4f orbital. It has three nodal planes. It's a wild orbital, pretty fun at parties. On this slide are all the orbitals I've just explained. All energy levels have a single s orbital, starting with the 1s in the first energy level. Starting in the second energy level, all energy levels have, a, have three p orbitals. Starting in the third energy level, all energy levels have five d orbitals. Starting in the fourth energy level, all energy levels have seven f orbitals. There are even more orbitals than these, such as g and h orbitals, but we don't see them come up very often in chemistry. The first three, s, p, and d, will be the most important for this class. 